The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that readeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It is our great profitableness war with the finite intelligence of the endowment ministry of the Old Testament time, nor the enabled ministry in the future eschatological dispensation, but rather only the dispensational believers of the church age could realize. It is for our great honor, at the same time in return, to pay back to our Lord with extreme subjection of humility, not requiring to ask Lord God the Father the kindness which he has showed equal to Paul, the grace which Lord has bestowed equal to Peter, but rather looking unto the forgiveness of our way of life in this earth which our Lord and Master and Savior Jesus Christ bestowed upon that robber on the cross. With that humble subjectionness, getting back to know the things which are pertainable unto Lord God's glory, in this unique dispensation of the church age, it would be great profit as we live in this earth in the pilgrimage tour to be constantly under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and try to come and approach this infallible and inerrant word, which is always immutable and veracity. And there is no way that we can change our words, alter our glory, and get our lives not according to the sanctification of the truth which Lord has bestowed upon us. Since Lord Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, he recognizes only one standard of his teaching. And if we believers do not change our mindset to those absolute standards of teaching which Lord has bestowed upon the sinful mankind, then the order of our worship, the order of our prayer, the order of our praise is absolutely 200% contrary and sure to God's mind. So, dear brethren, whenever we want to listen to our tape, or whenever we want to approach our Lord, or whenever we want to meditate upon Bible doctrine, or whenever we want to fortify our soul and spirit in this angelic conflict with the right word of the Lord, we need to tune up, which is in accordance and acceptable to God's mind. And how can we, being sinners, can tune up? You may ask me how we are sinners. Absolutely we are sinners. Either by thought, word, or deed, even after believing in Christ, we do sin. But this time this sin is not a sin of unbelief. But rather it is your own personal sin. The traits which move towards, trends towards legalism, or asceticism, or antinomianism, or lasciviousness or trends towards leading area of your strength and area of your weakness. This is your personal traits of your sins. Many believers, when we can come and look, when Lord has called us to purge ourselves from all iniquity, so that we can become a peculiar people, zealous of good works, we are in return walking contrary not becoming peculiar people, but rather zealous of bad works, followed by morality, and above all, using salvation as a base to show forth sign of changes in your moral standards. Men may think, in my country like India, when an unbeliever believes in the Lord, he wants to change his name as well to the so, to the so-called great apostle or prophet or great servant of the Lord whosoever has been found in the Bible. 
it is not as simple dear brother and as you think if you could change your name from your old name into new name so that you can have been already changed into new form it takes time it takes study it takes your experiential scientification in the process and that experiential scientification in the process demands Bible doctrine as a nutrient. And there is no way that you are thinking you are performing right. It is not as simple as that you are changed from an un unbeliever God name towards a believer saint or believing saint. It takes time. And it takes the scientification process of work to be done constantly. Exactly in the same manner when we believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we need to make our relationship right. How can we make our relationship right or our fellowship right? As Lord bestowed upon us the great examples of all time in the Bible to learn for us through the nature as well. The palm trees, though you bound it up, though you try to curve it down, you know what does it do? It always shoots up straight. And that is what you and I, dear brethren, need to understand when we are approaching our living Lord. Our living and jealous Lord, when we are trying to come to Him, we should make sure that our fellowship with Him is absolutely upright. And that uprightness in the sense, cross-checking ourselves through the rebound technique, which is 1 John 1, 1.9. And this is not a license to sin, but rather it is a license to serve back, Lord, in this dungeon when you are out of fellowship. And rebound is the first power option. And when you have been rebounded, the second power option comes into play, and that is the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the unique indwelling ministry of all time in this church age believer alone, who has been termed out as Alec Enicetes' new spiritual species in Christ. Never in the past nor in the future, the indwelling mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will come into play. It is only in this unique dispensation of the church age. It is not only indwelling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but rather it is also indwelling power of the Trinity, entire Lord God, the Father, and Lord God, the Son, followed by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, indwells in you, right in your body. And using salvation as a basis for your moral refinements, is exactly what this world follows in its religions. The world of this era follow through their religion mind to look morally pure, to look outwardly pure as the name will be changed from an unbeliever towards a believer sect. Suppose for example in India there are various names like Ramesh, Suresh and they use even some of the God names for them. And there are evidences in India, like the first William Carey convert, you know, as Krishna, who wanted to change his name, might he have changed his name or not, we don't know. But when he has changed his name, even his characteristics would appear to that name, but not at that moment, but in a long due of process of time. So even the believers, even the unbelievers who want to believe in the Lord may be changing their name from Ramesh to Paul and from Suresh to Peter or from XYZ Ganesh to John. But do you think the character of their appearances will be so easily changed? As people think so easily they can change their name, they can change their moral activities or virtue or the things wherewith they have been called to exemplify themselves in the praise and glory and honor of worship of my Lord. Is it possible by them, by this simple flash of a second, when they change their name, is it possible? Never it will be possible until and unless they go through this experiential sanctification, which is nothing but growing in the word of Lord God Almighty. And dear brethren, to grow in the word of Lord God Almighty, there is a systematic procedure which the mind of Christ alone recognizes. And that systematic procedure is rebound, which is 1 John 1 9. The rebound technique which we need to use, the confession of our sins. And if we are not confessing our sins and trying to get back into the fellowship of the Lord, 
that it is as good as you are battling around in your own delusions and morals of stories. The reason behind that, men have not been properly taught the technique. Men may start simply to preach. Men may start simply to tell you some examples. But never will men tell to you what is the truth. The men in the sense who leads the flock, who have been termed as pastor teachers in the congregation. Because Ezekiel 34 tells, these are the men who are, these are the, these are the men who are going to take care of my flock. And the one who take care of my flock are men. Men means gibber, the men of strength, strength realms towards Bible doctrine, not the physical strength. And what a great privilege it is for you and for me as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to stay in this unique dispensation of the church age. The church age began at Pentecost and the church age ends at the rapture, which is ex anastasis or exit resurrection. But in the meantime, you and I surviving in this world as a pilgrimage tour, the world will never change its character. Because it has been headed by Satan. It always wants to use those false tactics, false stratagem. You know why? Satan is a murderer from the beginning. And it is also a liar from the beginning. And Satan knew what is truth. Truth is number one, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Truth is number one, that we believe upon the Lord for our salvation. Truth is number one, he is the only unique Lord who has provided us this salvation. Truth is number one, he was a deity as well as humanity. That is a true doctrine of the kenosis. Kenosis means completion or completely pouring down out. Truth is number one, he died for you and for me through incarnation taking form into physical form. And truth is number one. That he was crucified for you and for me on the cross as a substitutory spiritual death upon the cross. And truth is number one, he paid for you and for me for full. For expiation through propitiation. So that now we can be reconciled unto Christ. And truth is number one, he even appeared after resurrection. And through this number one, which in the post-resurrection of 40 days, he literally appeared to them and made them to be aware. If he is a pastor teacher to do his work properly and are telling to Peter to do it absolutely right as Lord demands. And that is the great work, dear brethren, on behalf of you and me, which Lord and Savior Jesus Christ could do. And that is the number one truth. And number two truth is Bible doctrine. These were the manifestations of our Lord, either in the form of Christophany, Theophanies, and literally incarnation of hypostatic union. But after that, now we see the living word dwelling amidst us. And this living word demands on part of you and me to assimilate it, to take in daily as the only valuable nutrient for your soul and activated human spirit. Without this doctrine, there is no way that you can come close to understand what is the truth. Without this doctrine, you can never be kept as sanctified unto the Lord. People have been replacing the one who are approaching the pulpits with the so-called their denominational heads. Those things wherewith they think they are right. That's why they are performing miracles or healings or tongues. That's why they are paying penance, giving tithes, making a woman to preach over the pulpit. And you know what is a strange thing in the Bible? The truth, sternly, that is, with hard, severe, strict, the truth sternly refuses any admixture with error. And the truth is most exclusive in its character. 
That's why Bible doctrine tells to us to make the fortizo or to manifest the light when you are into the dark to know and to understand the manifold wisdom of God. And that is not possible either by your fasting or groaning or praying or speaking in tongues, dear brethren. That is possible only through only one key which has been known as iconomas in the English dispensation. The only dispensing technique. And if you are not able to get this technique, no matter what great preacher you are, as you think yourself, you will be a preacher. Kindly remember this word. Biblical truth sternly refuses any admixture with error. And the character of the truth demands isagogical, categorical, and exegetical exposition of biblical truth in the pulpit. If there is no exposition of Bible doctrine through exegesis, then that is not the exclusive character of the truth. No matter people will come trying to tell to you, it is hard for us to understand. It is very hard to take into the things. But do you know what, dear brethren? Bible doctrine is logical. No doubt how logical it might be. With your complete, humble subjection, if you could approach the living Lord to teach you this truth, Lord has already provided in you that divine mentor who always indwells in you. But either by your sin, which is either through thought, word, or deed, you grew and squelch, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which indwells in you constantly to teach you and to energize. In return, your activated human spirit in this biblical knowledge. And since we fail to understand this simple technique of learning the word of the Lord, Bible doctrine becomes skeptic, mystic, And in fact, even delusions to be confused. Why such kind of an apostate pastor leaders who are standing in the pulpits, whatever little theology comes from their mouth will be primarily false. And not only that, whenever they stand up in the pulpits, they are taking further the congregation from the truth. And since it is a hard, tough time or tough work to be done, like sitting and studying for accuracy, for consistency through exegetical manner. They replace this with personal visiting, counseling, and they try to attract crowd by vain philosophy. And not only this, dear brethren, they want to give you about the speculation of false spiritual gifts which are into force in today's pulpits. Whenever a woman or a man, they're trying to preach in the word with tongues, do you think they are really preaching in tongues? They are blaspheming my Lord God Almighty. And what are they doing with their tongues? And Gashtamutas controls their vocal cords in the duplication of the real spiritual gift of languages or tongues prophesied by Isaiah and fulfilled till AD 0070 so that the Jews could be born that Lord Jesus Christ who appeared unto them was the real Messiah and believing upon him they shall have been saved. But they became the principal of Hosea 3, 4 through 5. Without king, without prince, without apart, without Tarmim. What they are now. If it were not in the Second World War to get into the map of the world, Israelites wouldn't have been considered into the world as well. That is the wrath of the Lord upon those people who fail to believe upon Lord God Almighty. And in today's Christendom, erroneously trying to mix the truth with error, they want to practice the spiritual gift of tongues. And who are rising these things? 
apostate leaders trying to show themselves they are absolutely pure filled with the spirit and the people should come to them to attract or to be attracted by them that's the simple principle behind that and the Pentecostal crowds which are rising to 60 to 70 percent in today's Christendom have been doing the same cheap gimmickal tricks of pastoral one as if they lay down their hands upon them even the other person also speaks in tongues with a doubt if he doesn't speak in tongues then the people will think he's not been spiritually filled and if he doesn't been spiritually filled he cannot live his moral poise purity life Truth has an exclusive character, dear brethren. And if you are not able to come to this truth, and if you are not able to look to the standards of Bible doctrine, dear brethren, no matter what you are, where you are, what are you performing, everything will be sure at. Try to check this again and again in your souls and spirits. Either you are into the truth or a mixture of truth with error. And that is what you and I in Christ need to check again and again. In this unique dispensation, in this great privilege of all time, if you are not able to approach our living Lord with the true right procedure, which is to use rebound by 1 John 1 9, which is a true right activism work that we need to do to be performed, and then to failing to do that, Though being indwelt by the Trinity, the greatest power of all time, the greatest privilege, the greatest opportunity, the greatest responsibility upon our shoulders. For you as a believer to grow in grace and for a pastor teacher to preach the word and for an unbeliever to believe upon Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in this realm by faith alone, in Christ alone, such great privilege never bestowed upon anyone else but only in this period of the church age. Then to why we want to change our lives for the useless and worthless things of vanity in this world, dear brother. Men will never change. Because when our Lord God Almighty works, He works at once and shows absolute perfectness. And that absolute perfectness of standards, what He has done, that is what He says, the sixth phrase on the cross, Catalastai, it is finished. That is absolute perfectness, absolute completeness, absolute truth. There is nothing that you can add to it. There is nothing you can take away from it. So that is the character of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He has done it. There is nothing you can add for your works again. That is, there is nothing you can add to your salvation by your works again. The simple act which has told for us to believe, believe, believe. Faith alone and Christ alone. And if you are not able to get back those things and to give top priority for Lord God Almighty work, then no matter what you are performing, everything will be sure on top of life. Because Lord and Savior Jesus Christ always looks for absolute standard absolute perfectness if it remains 100 percent pure we need to stay 101 percent pure in his sight even your 99.9 percent .9 or 99.99 percent .99 purity in the christ is a failure because he has given us to be more than 100% purity in Christ. And that is what he has given us, that great privilege. Because he indwells in us as a Shekinah glory. Because he indwells in us with the teaching mentor ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. And he indwells in us with God the Father as well. So that we can have a constant desire for truth. So that we can have that constant love unto God. So that we can have that strength of character in us so that we can have that incredible stability towards Christ, so that we can persevere in Him, move, be momented in Him, or be motivated for Him by looking and sharing the happiness of Christ and being occupied unto Christ. What a great privilege it is for you and for me to serve that living Lord in this unique dispensation, dear brethren. We have been called and been chosen out to show forth in terms of quality of absolute standards of perfectness, dear brethren. Absolute standards of perfectness. Absolute. And that's why he has given us the perfection through Tetelestai. 
which my Lord spoke on the cross. Salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. No more works are required by you from you. So that you can complete that perfectness. You just walk into that door by faith alone in Christ alone. You enter that salvation. You experience that eternal life. You enjoy that righteousness. Positionally, at the moment when you express your volition, tell it to the point that you believe upon Christ. And that is by faith alone in Christ alone. And afterwards, what? Positionally, you are being sanctified. You are being superior then to the chief fallen angel known as Satan. Experientially, what? You need to grow up. Ultimate sanctification is what? That is taken care by Lord God the Father after you die. But your positional work is not being done by you. Your ultimate work is not being done by you. But only one, only one work is been required by you to be done. And that is your experiential sanctification. And that experiential sanctification for you to grow up demands Bible doctrine as the only nutrient. Metabolism of Bible doctrine. Only possible under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And people will wrongly misspell it as filled as the KJV tells. And filled as nothing to be done rather than rising heresies of doctrines. Until and unless you have been filled of the Spirit, there are no signs that are going to follow. And if you have been filled of the Spirit, the only one great sign is that you speak in tongues gibberishly, emotionally and ecstasy. And not only that, you have the power to perform miracles. You have the, perform, you have the power to do healings. All those things are sheer out of a lie coming straight from the mind of Satan. As you are now, you will be the same even after believing in Christ and being filled of the Spirit. There is no emotion to be done anything in this church age. If there is any emotion to be filled of the Spirit and to be done, it is in the millennium. The passage of Joel 2. And the passage which Peter quotes in Acts chapter 2, people may think that it has been done and executed. It is only half of the passage. The remaining passage has been left undone. It will be for the millennium, dear brethren. And that passage wherewith we look now is the indwelling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, used for enlightenment. So, when Lord God Almighty works, He works at once and shows absolute perfectness. But whereas in man like us, on the contrary, perfectness, which after all is but relative and is always of slow growth. That's why we need to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But this growth has been hindered by some who follow false doctrines, false teachings, false practices. And the ultimate failure is from the pulpit where which they serve the Lord. The failure wherewith they try to come and approach the living Lord, telling to the point that they have done so many great things. They have done so many exclusively workable things which could be a great gain if they would follow into other religions apart from Christianity. But this is not the real growth, dear brethren. The growth for a believer is to grow up in Bible doctrine. The growth for a pastor teacher is to start communicate his teaching from the ice concept in his pulpits, which is isagogical, categorical, and exegetical exposition of biblical doctrine through the only unique dispensing technique, which is none other but economists or administration or stewardship or in our translated version of KJV <coughs> termed as dispensation and apart from that there is nothing you want you can understand you can realize so dear brother and you and I need to understand the simple dogmatical truth if it were not unto Christ if it were not looking that our growth is very slow, that our growth being given by our pastor teachers who are there in your pulpits is very mediocre. Until then, dear brother, it is a tough time for you to be understood this simple dogmatical truth. Time is very short, which is laid down upon our shoulders. But the responsibility is very huge. And do you know what, dear brethren, what does it require? 
It requires your desire to be straight like that palm tree, which is always upright and straight. The palm branches, which always represent victory, even we should understand that. When we are straight and upright, our growth, our walk is also like those palm branches. And since we fail to realize the simple truths, we are giving to those secondary things as primary target or primary importance that never will they realize what it is in Christ. Those secondary things which Satan blinds the eyes of the so-called pastor teachers today in the Pentecostal crowd or in the Jehovah Witnesses or in the Oksu Park or Christadelphians or in fact even the Roman Catholicism doctrines which have come into play. Until and unless they try to come and to look and to understand the absolute perfectness, absolute standards which are found in Bible doctrine, absolute things which Lord has bestowed upon us because He is absolute and perfected. We, the men, can never preach the truth with dogmatical authority. And that demands on our part to be always controlled of the Spirit. So, now in the church, the originally constituted of God, which was faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness, is totally being rejected. The faith alone in Christ alone is been added by works to their salvation. Godliness or use of ayah has been totally rejected. And what a great gimmick of trickery they are sponsoring in the pulpits. When we try to understand those things, it really pains our heart. What was due unto his glory has been not at all given. When we, the believers, have been told, number one, by faith, the original constitution of the church, or of God, wherewith he has been given for us, this church, is to see by faith in God elect. And number two, acknowledgement of the truth, which is only after godliness or usabaya, the unique spiritual life. The spiritual self-esteem, followed by spiritual autonomy, and then followed by spiritual maturity, should be the only acknowledgement of the truth in your churches today, dear brethren. Why are you not able to understand this simple dogmatical truth? The original constitution of God, wherewith he has been elected us, for God's elect requires that first by faith alone in Christ alone we need to come to the point and number two acknowledgement of the truth which is after God's godliness is required on our part to be executed many are the people who come to the pulpit and they want to add to their faith some works works of baptism works of good deeds works of penance works of tithes Exactly in the same manner, when they want to come and look by faith alone in Christ alone is their salvation, they think it is not been proper. They think Lord requires something more to be added for their account. So they are at the works like those religion heads. But when we come to their spiritual life, what is their spiritual life after believing in Christ alone, through faith alone? They even want to add works to their spiritual life as well. What works? Works of good intrinsic value. Maybe works of charity, works of feeding the poor, works of living a moral life, forsaking drunkenness, adultery, robbery. Do you think all these things are the works for your spiritual life? Until and unless your inner transformation occurs, no matter what works you are trying to perform, what works you are trying to execute, will never come into play, dear brethren. The only peculiar people which Lord desires, and on their part, though being jealous of good works, is nothing but the unique spiritual life, which is you, Sabaya, which is godliness, translated in the KJV. And this you, Sabaya, demands on our part to give top priority for Bible doctrine. Number one, spiritual self-esteem. 
followed by cognitive self-confidence or doctrinal status quo, followed by problem-solving device number 7 and 8, which is personal love towards God and impersonal love towards all mankind, and followed by your providential preventive suffering, which is a category suffering for blessing, not for your punitive one, but for your growth to be tested, whether you are really eligible to go to the second stage or not. And when you pass down the providential preventive suffering, you enter into the second stage, which is spiritual autonomy. And here your doctrinal status quo will improve. Now it is cognitively independent. You do not require any counseling, but rather you take a right teaching from a right pastor teacher who teaches to you from the original exegesis of the word. And what do you do? You grow up in Bible doctrine more and more. Now we have the principle of Matthew 4.4. 4, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds from the mouth of Lord God Almighty. And with this, it has been given by the problem-solving device number 9, which is sharing the happiness of Christ, and then followed by your greatest momentum testing of all time people testing, thought testing, system testing, and your modus women and modus operandi, or your geographical will, or your operational will, where Lord wants you to stay. When you pass down all the four testings, then you are eligible for the third stage, which is spiritual maturity. And this spiritual maturity is what Christ looks and tells through Apostle Paul, being the so great man. I have not yet attained my spiritual maturity stage. I have not yet reached my spiritual maturity stage. And what is it that I need to do? I need to grow up in grace more and more. I need to grow up in doctrine more and more. So that though we are at alive in this physical body, what does it require? It requires your blood guard, the Holy Spirit being controlled in you, indwelt in you, being controlled, should rule your spirit, should rule your activated human spirit, and in return should control your physical body. So this is the status quo where the people praying will not come into picture, where the intercession will not come into play, but only your doctrine resident in your soul. That's why in the third and final stage, spiritual maturity followed by cognitive invincibility. That is your doctrinal status quo. Cognitive invincibility is the greatest one which you and I in Christ as a believer can gain that momentum. That is what complete comprehension of Bible doctrine, the perfectness of the absolute perfectness which we could learn by the daily growth of process in the experiential sanctification when we feed upon Bible doctrine more and more, more and more, more and more. So this cognitive invincibility followed by number the problem solving device solution which is occupation with Christ and then you get your suffering for blessing the ultimate testing of all time which is termed out as evidence testing one towards life and one towards the plan of God if it is towards life it is the point like Job suffering if it is towards the plan of God it will be like Christ and the way how Christ has endured if he's thousand pounds it will be given for us only hundred or ten because it depends upon the ministry and the responsibility that shall be laid down upon you either of the one which gets one testing to you you need to pass and when you pass down there it requires only your doctrine that you have been recollecting out from your soul and your activated human spirit and that doctrine alone can teach you can guide you can make you learn what it is and what it is not and when you pass down this evidence trusting that is your maximum glorification or invisible hero or winner believer in Christ dear brethren and for that alone you and I have been called and Lord has chosen us as a peculiar possession zealous of good works and the people fail to understand these things they think substitutory as by faith alone in Christ alone requires nothing but faith they want to add some works likewise this unique spiritual life they want to add for this Bible doctrine they think Bible doctrine is nothing but we need to add something by our manifestation of our outward performance of good deeds you know how does the real work comes when you have your inner transformation right when you have your inner renovation right when you have your inner dynamics or inner intrinsic nature absolutely right happening that is the moment itself that you can get along those things wherewith Lord God Almighty can call you because if you're not able to perform this momenting works if you're not able to perform these deeds very well then dear brethren you are not able to stand for Christ wherewith you will be thinking you are doing those things good you are doing those things right by charity or supplying these things which are required for them but when you compare to other religions other religions are far better morally and as well as since in such kind of a good work superior than you that's what dear brother you need to understand the true work which comes the true good works is nothing but acknowledgement of the unique spiritual life which is godliness and in the next step we shall continue some of the things
And since this trip has been too long, it is our privilege to stop up here and get those things because I knew men will take much of the time to download these things in the YouTube. But rather, the information given to these people, it could be worth of information because we are serving our Lord in this unique dispensation of the church age. A great time of all one. Never in the history in the past, never in the future will be given to any believer what privileges that have been bestowed upon us. So it is our unique privilege to serve our Lord only by the rebound technique, which is the confession of our sins through 1 John 1 9 and not only that it is by faith alone in Christ alone the procedure of salvation being the same yesterday today and tomorrow forever it is the same and not only that the only procedure which Lord acknowledges which is also the same for a believer to grow up and that acknowledgement of the truth is godliness which is Yusabaya the unique spiritual life and answering back Zakir Naik is not a big deal. Telling him such and such things is not a big deal. But why I have been emphasizing much upon the unique Christendom of this unique dispensation of the church age is that the people should know the truth. And if they could know the truth, the truth shall set them free. And if they are free, indeed they are free only when they are Christ slave and how can we become Christ slave until and unless we can learn his mind be subjected or be oriented to his mind and if your failures to be subjected or to be oriented to his mind dear brethren then our life is a sheer of a lie that we are living our life is a traitorship that we are living and though we were enemies though we've been now called to become friends the friends are those who can do those things which the father has told for them to do Will you be a friend or still a traitor? Decide yourself. But the Ultima choice is in our hands. Ultima volition is in our soul. You can opt to learn Bible doctrine or you may reject to learn Bible doctrine. Learning Bible doctrine, rejecting Bible doctrine is left in your own hands. And if you're not able to do that properly, which Lord God the Father demands on our part to be done, because whatever work we need to do, it should have that exclusive character. That exclusive character which do not mix up with error. And mixing up with error is not preaching exegesis. And which way you want to go, dear brethren, that is left to you. At the judgment seat of Christ, you want to show the glory of the Lord like an unprofitable slave or having that remark on our behalf that we could seek the forgiveness of our Lord as that robber seek. Or that sinner who was passing by the temple who said, Lord, remember me, I am a sinner. And not like the Pharisee. Or the tax collector who says, I have come here twice, I fast twice, I pay you tithes. But rather with humble subjection like an unprofitable slave. That which is our duty to be done, we need to do. And when you are really in humility to learn Bible doctrine, and when you are straight and upright like that palm tree to grow up for the integrity and standardness of Christ. Lord God Almighty will definitely provide you that information wherewith you have been called. And if you are not able to understand that dear brother and Lord help you. Because we have been called as his children. And his children has to tell you an example. A lion give birth to lion cubs, but never to donkeys nor dogs. Even we believers in Christ are the royal family of God. Not the Old Testament failure saints, nor the, new, nor the future eschatological event hardened mind people who failed to believe in Christ. Though 1,44,000 Jews evangelize the entire world to believe in Christ. But rather we are the unique dispensation. We are the unique royal family. We are the Alekene Ketesus of all time. And if you are not able to understand this dear brethren, Lord help you at the judgment seat of Christ. For the ignorance, negligence, and importance of vanity which you have given each and every day. Though we have been given this information in the YouTube, now and then even an unlearned guy can have access to the internet. 
That is what we could find in the smartphones, the network that is developing so easily. And you cannot deny yourself, I don't know how to use these things. If you are straight and upright like the palm tree, definitely the inner being which searches you, you and your nature. And if you are a believer in Christ, will make you to believe, will make you to search those real things which is a testimony to his voice. And you can in return learn this word and apply it for your own growth so that it is doctrine, doctrine, doctrine alone. And if there is no truth, and if there is no proper truth as well, because biblical truth recognizes no admixture with errors. And apart from exegesis, what they're telling, then it's an error. Apart from isagogical and categorical preposition of the subject, what they're telling, it is an absolutely mixture of errors. Only the true doctrine demands exegomai and the dispensing technique. Learn through that, grow up in that, so that it could be valuable for your own growth at the judgment seat of Christ. So with these few words of exhortation on my tape and the next tape we shall cover the things. Not only answering back Zachary Mike, even as such we could fortify on the fifth phrase, I am thirsty. So with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to believe and they tell to God the Father that the believing in Son, if he is an unbeliever, in the privacy of his soul, that is the moment itself they shall have eternal life. And if he is a believer, the target for him is to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And if he is a pastor teacher, the target for him is to preach the word Kerosothon Logan. And how he can do that? Until and unless he faithfully studies the word of the Lord like a drudge. And that is what, dear brethren, you and I need to understand. As a pastor teacher, our duty is to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but the one who rightly divides the word of truth. And whereas for an unbeliever, the gospel is very simple and very clear, as lucid as it can be. Believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. And whereas for a believer, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So which way you choose, as a pastor, as a believer, or as an unbeliever, it is left to you. Because each and every breath is accountable unto Christ. Each and every soul without believing in Christ, which goes immortal, is accountable unto Christ. And each and every believer, each and every unbeliever soul is accountable unto Christ. And each and every believer growth is also accountable unto Christ. And each and every mission of responsibility laid down upon the shoulders of a pastor teacher is also accountable to be shown unto Christ. So which way they go, which way you go, and which way I as a pastor teacher go, need to be answered at the judgment seat of Christ. So Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou art given to us to fellowship with thee through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in these things, for we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.